Hi friends! Welcome back for number four. Um, I think everything is in order. Audio is going. Um, and we should be able to pipe someone in later in Discord if uh, anyone's willing to hop on. But uh, yeah, made it to the end of the month. We've been streaming four weeks in a row now. And I'm so happy to have y'all along. Um, this one, I sort of wanted to just, like, wrap things up. Like, my, my vision is to, uh, have three sort of lessons and then, like, a wrap-up, which is a lot shorter on the lecture, like a review, recap quiz, um, with a prize. Woo! So, uh, get ready for that. And, uh, yeah, just a quick... A lecture on on a little mini topic, and then uh, just sort of chat to ask questions. I think is gonna be how how we do this. So uh, yeah, let's get that quiz going. Hold on one second. So I think I have to do desktop view and reviews. So I'm going to start this up for y'all, and then you'll have to put in the pin, and then remember the answers are on the screen, um, not on your device. So you'll have to sort of like compare back and forth. I've, I've put, I've given the questions more time so that people are more likely to have time to respond, because I think there's some delay on the uh, streaming action. So here it is. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, there is the pin. Nine eight nine three eight three. Um. So I don't know if we have as many people today, but that just means that some lucky camper is going home with a mystery prize. I'm not going to ruin it um, quite yet, but it's sitting right here, and I can't wait to show you. And it might be my mother, but that's okay. Um, well, looks like we got Alex in there. Hey, Alex. Ooh, Jason K. I uh, got my mama. All right, I think that might be everyone that's here today. Ooh, bees. Hello, bees. Um, I'll give it a few more seconds here. I don't know how to tell the 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 uh, user list in. Oh, it's it says seven, but then in the chat there's only three people. So I'll give those people a few more seconds to hop in there. Counting down. Oh, I got a little glare from the... There we go. Cool. All right, bees, I think was the last one in there. I'm going to hit that start button. All right, here we go. So we're reviewing what we went over this season. I believe in y'all. Uh, hmm. Feedback. Humans usually make better decisions and learn better with feedback. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I can just do whatever I want. Oh, yeah. No, you guys are killing it. Don't even need the, all the extra time. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Ooh, two times the points. Which part of a procrastination cycle is the best to change? At least according to the book, uh, The Power of Habit. Um, the science apparently finds either the cue, the reward, the routine, or the belief being the best part to change of a habit that you're attempting to, uh, put something else in there to create a new cycle and get a new habit going. Nice. Yeah. Three people got routine. That's correct. Apparently. So the idea there is, uh, rather than grab a glass of wine, uh, maybe, uh, watch a video. All right. So true or false cortisol is an opioid. 
opioids, you know, they make you kind of bleh. That's a sort of post-surgery action. We talked about cortisol in the first episode. Yeah, false. So cortisol, I think it, uh, someone gave me the name in the chat on the first episode. It's a, it's science chemical. Um, but, uh, that's a stress hormone that puts you in the state of first it's focus and alertness, uh, just in case there's a lion out there and then it's panic and that's fight, flight, freeze, befriend type stuff. All right. Ooh, multiple answers on this one and two times to points. Someone with an internal locus of control might, do they, do they explain how they and their ex contributed to the breakup? Or was it, did, do they blame things all on Deborah? Or, I mean, I think this dog is blaming it on the cat. I'm pretty sure. Or do they stand up for things they believe they are right and don't do what this little cute little doggy's doing? <laughs> Yeah, so that's, it's taking responsibility for your actions is, is basically the internal locus of control. You, you, your life is in your hands, and uh, yeah, that's, it's a helpful mindset to have when you're trying to uh, get through life, because <laughs> a lot of times we don't have the, uh, the control. Changing my perception can change how well I learn. So this was somewhat, we talked about the locus of control. We also talked about um, external and internal motivations. And we also talked about um, uh, the other one. Oh, external. Goodness gracious. We, we talked about it, and you all got it right, so obviously I, I taught really well. Oh, fixed mindset and growth mindset. That's, that's what I was looking for. Uh, you know, fix things, you know, there's nothing they can do about what they know and who they are and how they act. And a growth mindset is like, well, if I put an effort, I'll probably change. Next, th these puzzle ones are tough. I think I have 60 seconds on this one. So you're trying to put things in the right order. So first you want look ahead. Then you want recall. Then you want the memory palace. And then you want spaced repetition. So try and put those in this order. Look ahead. Recall, memory palace, space repetition. So, after absorbing new info, spend time reviewing. Okay, that's one. Reading upcoming chapter headings and images. That's one of those. Tying concepts to a place you know well. That's one of those up there. And then flashcards at increasing intervals. That's what we got. So we're trying to get them in this order. And all of these are helpful things to help you learn. Um, you know, some might help more than others, but I uh, find a few of these really kind of kind of surprisingly easy to do, just uh, hard to remember. <laughs> ah, so we got a few people. I got it. Cool. Nice. Good job, Alex and Pixelmoth. Oh, Pixelmoth got in here. Sweet. So my behaviors are fixed patterns that are impossible to change. Impossible. Your, your behavior, you're just who you are, and that's it. Like, you couldn't possibly be, you know, recreating the own momentum of your existence. Yeah. All right. Cool. I have those gimmies in there, but uh, I also think the point of, of those ones is really important to get across. Good job, Jason. All right, we got multiple questions and extra points. What are some of the benefits of meditation? DJ Khaled over here is really getting into it. Are we going to get bigger muscles? Are we going to emotionally regulate? Improve concentration? Hmm, I don't know and wasting time. Yep, that's good stuff. Meditate. I've, I don't know, I have ADHD, and ever since I've actually started meditating regularly, it's noticeable, like, especially when I stop doing it, and I start forgetting a lot more. Systems theory hmm, suggests things are their dynamics and relationships, not discrete, separate objects. Systems theory. That's uh, Gregory Bateson. Also, his daughter Nora Bateson 
had some interesting takes on the theory as well. Yeah, so that's true. So, I mean, I think it's a it's a mind-blowing way to start looking at things of turtles on turtles. It's just turtles all the way down everywhere you look. Everything's connected to everything else. Huh, sounds like something religious people have been saying for a long time. Imagine that. Uh, true or false? Learning from someone else who understands the material is better than solving the problem yourself. Hmm. This gerbil or guinea pig? Yeah, it's guinea pig, I think. They're, it looks like, are they doing their own work or are they getting the answer from someone else? Yeah, I mean, I could see how that one could be, uh, go either way, but ultimately your internal, like, dopamine system, like, problem-solving system, like, listening to someone will help you start, but, uh, them telling you how a problem is done, not as good as you hitting your head against the wall of the problem and getting the dopamine reward of solving it yourself. Because they, they, they solved it themselves and got their own dopamine reward. So generally, they find problem solving is, doing it yourself is, uh, sticks in your brain better. What helpful tool helps us plan, track, and analyze? Uh, I find this is a very helpful tool. I definitely recommend getting into using this tool. And, uh, Mr. Bean is pointing right at it. <laughs> yeah, calendar, calendar is a calendar. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, so, so like I mentioned in episode three, it's, it's, you know, not just having a calendar and putting things into it, but it's also reviewing the calendar. Definitely, like, the beginning of the week or every day, like, checking your calendar, looking ahead, and then reviewing after you've done stuff. That is what helps the sort of looking at it ahead, experiencing it, and looking behind, really helps it stick in there. Ooh, bees took over. Good posture is mostly, I'm like, uh, uh, mostly for confidence. No health benefits, though. I mean, couldn't confidence be a health benefit? Yeah, that, that one's, that one's false. Uh, uh, for one, you open up the, your your diaphragm. You get you get more room in your lungs to pull lung, oxygen into the bottom of your lungs, where the uh, the most efficient gas transfer takes place. So yeah, oh, good posture. Who's Barbara Oakley again? Who's was it? Was it my best friend? Or was, did she develop system theory? Or she taught the course that I learned how to learn from? Or did she do all three of those things? Barbara Oakley's killing it. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, she has a course called Learning How to Learn that uh, basically informed all of Episode 2 and was kind of an inspiration for just this whole general season. Um... But uh, yeah, it's a great course. It's free on Coursera, and it's probably an hour to two hours of work per week, um, and you can self-pace it. It's a really, really good course. Highly recommend. Uh, which of these will help you ingrain a new pattern? Regularly tracking and reviewing goals. Shaming yourself when you fail. Hoping for the best. Or changing your response to a cue. I mean, I know I do a lot of this. I'm not sure if it's ingraining the right pattern or not, though. <laughs> yeah, so definitely, yeah, re goal tracking is is uh, really helpful. I've got a, a resource at the end of class for y'all to. Uh... Oh. Battle at the top of the board. Only five questions left. What will happen? Uh, I should wait until I'm motivated to really ingrain something. Because I mean, that's that's when you learn the most, right? When you're when you're motivated. I mean, I guess that sounds possible, but it's false, and everyone knew it. Um. Yeah, the idea is is really if you're putting time into something, 
the motivation will actually spark out of it, uh, which is like a catch-22, sort of like, you have to do the thing and then the motivation will come. But, uh, yeah, I think it's, you know, you're deciding to make action and your brain provides like, oh, they decided they want to do that. So, and they showed me by doing the thing. So maybe I'll give them a little carrot on a stick to chase after later. Ah, oh, another multi-selection. Get those big points. Some extrinsic motivations. So it sounds very external. Uh, with curiosity about the world? Hmm, it's curiosity, I think. Affording a sweet car. Hmm. Owning your own house. Or knowing thyself. What do we think, y'all? This one can kind of... Well, I can see, see answers in both places here. Yeah, I, I, especially the way this curiosity about the world is phrased, it's kind of one of those like gotcha questions because it's ultimately curiosity. It's an internal thing that you're, you, you want to, to follow the curiosity, even though you're looking in the external world. Um, a sweet car is a tangible benefit of getting paid enough money to afford one and same thing with a house. Um, I never thought I would own a house, uh, when I was working as an artist, but, uh, tech seems to uh, make that possible. All right, what part of the brain helps us problem solve? Uh, there's a few cortex-related options here. The frontal cortex, just the whole cortex, the prefrontal cortex, or the cortex cortex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, frontal cortex is tempting, but it is the prefrontal cortex. That's the part of the brain that humans, for some reason, have an ab abnormal amount of uh, evolutionary growth there, which uh, is related to uh, decision-making, long-term decision-making, behavior regulation, and that sort of thing. Uh, and problem-solving. Oh, Alex, just coming out of the blue! Oh, wait, what's going to happen? Only three questions left. What are the proper steps of deep breathing? All right, so we've got exhaling slowly. Seems like it would be difficult to start with exhaling, but uh, we're, I guess wherever works for you. Um, belly breathing. So that's, you know, you can put your hand on your belly and your chest. Make sure you're using the diaphragm, the set of muscles around the lower part of your chest to expand your belly. Emptying the diaphragm, that's making sure to exhale and you can use your at the end of your breath, if you empty your diaphragm, you feel like you've exhaled everything, but if you squeeze your belly, where you, you're holding air at the bottom of your lungs. Uh, yeah, so the, the correct order was belly breathe, exhale slowly, empty your diaphragm, and repeat. And this, this real, like, I, I've been using it uh, a lot the past few days, and the, the relaxation state is noticeable. You can feel the... It's it's very interesting. Well, Jade, wow, this is neck and neck here at the end here. Ooh-wee! Okay, I rephrased this question. Talented InfoSec professionals are in blank supply. There is blank demand. Thus, salaries are blank. So the amount of InfoSec professionals, hmm, what supply? How's the demand for InfoSec professionals? And how are those salaries? Oh, wow, yay, I rephrased it so everyone could get it. Hallelujah. But yes, uh, I really wanted to make this point again. There is very high demand uh, for InfoSec professionals right now. Um... This this way this opening in the wave is not going to last forever, but I think the next three to five years there's going to be we're going to need a lot of people, and the amount of talented people and sort of people that have put in the work to be to be competent at the job very short supply. Even though there's lots of people with degrees that have uh, spent a lot of money and I feel so bad, but they don't have a lot of the skills when they graduate. So, uh, yeah, the opportunity is ripe for, for people with no accreditations or four-year degrees to really get in there. 
All right, last one. My behaviors have lots of momentum that are difficult, but possible to change. I mean, Alana and uh, Abby, they, uh, <laughs> they definitely have some interesting behaviors they might want to uh, <laughs> work on changing. <laughs> Yeah, we do have lots of momentum in our behaviors, but, uh, you know, just steering the boat one degree difference. You take that behavior off 500 miles and you're in a very different place from keeping the course. All right, y'all. That was a close one. Really close one. Third place, Alex. Second place, my mama. And... Jason K. Awesome. Thank you all so much for joining. So, Jason K. Um, here, let me switch to. Dun, 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 dun. Awesome. Thank you all for joining. So, I found this resource recently and, uh, it's freaking beautiful. It's kind of one of those things that every InfoSec person is going to have on their desk at some point. It is the opera. Oh God, the green screen destroys it. Uh, it's called the Operator Handbook. Let's see if we keep it. Yeah, the green screen is not happy with it though. But what this is, it's just like a reference manual for so many like standard applications that we use in InfoSec. It's got blue team stuff. It's got red team stuff. It's got just general Linux tips and hard hardening the configuration on Linux. It's got a bunch of really good information in it. I ordered three copies just so I could give them to people in person once they, they reached a certain level where it would be handy. But, I mean, it's... As an InfoSec person, I forget. You know, I have to look at the manual page and be like, how does SSH work again? Like, every time I need to use it. Um, because if you're not doing it every day, it doesn't stick. So having a manual like this is super handy. I'll, I'll post a link... Um, but then, uh, Alex, Firo, get in touch with me, just message me or email me and, uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll get that sent your way. Cool. All right. So, um, I don't know. Oh, I still have a lecture to do and I have a hair in my mouth. Um, okay. That's better. Um, so, uh, yeah, I am going to do a quick little lecture. Did 20 minutes on the quiz. I swear it'll be quick. I can show you there's only seven slides, not my normal 20. And then if you're on the Discord, I think I have figured it out to get chat in my earpiece as well as on the stream. Yeah. Huge finger cross moment. But, uh, yeah, let's get this lecture over with. All right, so, all right, so I switched up my, my intro slide, because I think this is more important than being like, hey, you should do projects and connect with your peers and have passion, blah, blah, blah. Sure, I think you are your teacher, and that's all I'm trying to get across every, every episode is just like, I'm like a facilitator, perhaps, or, uh... I don't know, something along those lines. I feel like teacher is reserved for teachers who are essential and uh, are sort of, I consider myself an educator or a learning facilitator. But ultimately the teacher is and can be you. Like I can, I can try and point like resources and systems to help you onboard more systems. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. But uh, yeah, you're, you're the one that's going to get yourself to where you want to be. Um, and I can, I can give you realistic check-ins on where you're at and where I think you need to be to, to, to get to that level. So feel free to reach out on the discord or email or what have you, but, uh, yeah, you, you can do it. I believe in you. Um, so yeah, we did the quiz already. Uh, I sort of went out of order here, but we did the recap. Congrats again, uh, Firo. And, uh, yeah, last, last thing we're covering here is an epilogue on documentation. So 
it sounds kind of boring, and it kind of is, but uh, I think it can be really helpful. The reason I really wanted to cover this is because you're going to be learning a lot of stuff anyways, and at the end, you should be good at documentation because that's a skill set that they may not necessarily be able to test test you um, before you get the job, but as soon as you get the job, if you don't know how to document well and like which is what the SOC analyst position is meant to do. You are documenting for the business why this alert that popped in the channel for you to research and investigate, you have to pop out a comment or a ticket or something that explains your logic and can prove to the business that yes, someone looked at this, someone used their, used their puzzle solving skills and decided this is not bad or this is bad because XYZ. So this, this skill set, uh, you can, I think is also really great because you can, uh, practice this while you are learning, uh, documentation, like literally taking notes during a class, um, is documentation. Um, I think a really apt point about documentation and, and taking notes during something you, you read or listen or, or whatever it is you're ingesting is that, uh, uh, let's say, so my mom showed me her notes after last class. Uh, she won the quiz, and I was like, oh, good job, Mom. Um, but uh, she took about a page and a half of notes. And granted, that's a lot more notes, and maybe you might trim down <laughs> or not, not write down as much. But regardless, if my mom wanted to go back and use the, the skill of spaced repetition to relearn what she learned in my class, Sure, she could watch my lecture over again, but that would take an hour. And I'm sure she loves listening to me ramble, but she can look at her notes, page and a half of notes, she could review that in five minutes. So, I mean, already there's a 12 times the speed. She's able to get her brain to the, to the notes, to the important points that she actually wants to put in her brain, as opposed to listening to me all over again. And some people are audio learners, so like that can actually help. But I, I feel like the more cues you give your brain to remember information, and especially having something to look back on afterwards, can uh, really help. So I feel like it's a good skill for not only producing reports, but also learning along the way. Uh, so the first major part of documentation is finding what's important. Um, Again, again, when you're, when you're reading like a, a 2000 word article, there's probably really only a handful of points in there, maybe 300 words of points, like things that are really what it's talking about. And the other stuff is like context to try and get you to understand the point they just made. But really you're like, the context is helpful, but you're only going to remember so much. And really it's, it's more about getting what's important because those important pieces you'll draw your own conclusions and figure out your own context as you sort of weigh the validity of that point. Um, so that skill is uh, super helpful. Uh, the, the look ahead uh, technique we mentioned is, is, is an example of that. It's sort of like looking at, looking ahead at uh, titles and, and pictures and bold words and, and that sort of thing is, is a good start. I think also there's, there's, an ability to skim and like find where they said the point that can be really helpful. Um, because as a SOC analyst, you're going to be looking at lots of data <laughs> and you're looking for the anomaly. You're looking for the thing like, Oh, that's interesting. And maybe like, maybe you don't, uh, maybe you don't use that important thing piece you think is important later. But if you document as you work, you will have that piece to use later. Um, this, this has saved me so much time in investigations where, you know, you find something that might be bad, might not be, but, uh, then you go back later and you're like, man, it still was like, seemed fishy to me. So you, you want to like really nail down on it. So, uh, having that document and you just have, you know, it's just notes after notes, kind of unorganized and whatever. You, you still have that inform information there. So you don't have to go searching for it again. Um, and sort of the same point with learning. Like if you're documenting as you're learning something, you know, reading an article and then writing down the main points as you go, it might take a little bit longer to read it the first time, but then you might only need to read it that one time. Uh, and then lastly, I think a super helpful uh, piece of this is to output what you know. 
Um, I think I lucked out, uh, that my mentor, he was really pushing me to like write articles and I'm like, but I don't know anything. And he's like, that doesn't matter because if you're just writing an article, not only are you making your thoughts more cohesive, you might actually help someone that is in the position you're at now. And I, I think I really benefited from the, the previous version of this class that I ran for two years, which was kind of just like having people shoulder surf and I had some notes to go by, but, um, I think that really helped me ingrain a lot of uh, security concepts because I was trying to explain it to other people. And, you know, other people learn differently than you do. Um, so when you're outputting what you know, oftentimes you have to explain it in a way that you know will be more understandable. And as a SOC analyst, and especially as you move up through the SOC, and, and because security works with so many departments, those like writing skills and communication skills and documentation skills of talking to other people are super, super important. Um, because if you get too technical, um, people, it's one ear out the other and they're not going to listen to what you actually want them to do. And, uh, so I think this skill can be honed as you go. Um, and I, and I highly suggest like keeping a blog as, as you learn things and like go through a CTF or learn a new concept. Like what articles did you look at? And like, how would you explain it? And that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I think that will help both, uh, when you get that job and all the way up until you get that job. So, um, oh, first I wanted to show something cool I made for y'all. Um, so this is, so the, the system I usually use to, uh, to take notes is Evernote. You can see all of my seasons planned here. I've got all the way up to season eight. Um, but I mean, I've got tons and tons of notes. Uh, Evernote, some of the features are locked behind paywall and you can only use on a, I think only one device, uh, which sucks if I want to look up stuff on my phone. Um, so on the, uh, seventh direction curriculum for this episode, it says, yeah, blank clever note, or you can see here, I'm suggesting start your clever note or your Evernote. So Evernote, you can use that if you want. And you pay, I think five, three bucks a month for the basic pro version. But I also have this, uh, Blank Clever Note. And this is a system called Tiddly Wiki. Um, so Wiki was sort of pioneered by Wikipedia. It's like a community editable, uh, thing. So if you download this, and then, oh, let's open it. If you download this, you'll have this cool little note taking system. So the way a Tiddly Wiki works is it is an HTML file with all of its resources ingrained in that HTML file. So if I save, well, well let's make a new tiddler real quick. So new tiddler. Um, and hey, I have that now. So now this is in the system somewhere. If I click this button here, it downloads a new HTML file. So that contains all the changes I've just made. So you can store this on a flash drive that you keep on your keychain. You can store it on a Google Drive, a Dropbox, uh, whatever, to have accessible anywhere. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you can store your notes everywhere. I've got a few of these for different purposes, um, just to show some cool things about this. So I really like the table of contents view on this particular Tiddly Wiki. There are various versions of this, but this is the coolest one I have found. Um, if I edit this Ted Tiddler and give it the tag of table of contents and save it, now I have a new tiddler right here that will be in my table of contents and I can organize this way. And then I can make sub tiddlers under this one by clicking on the hamburger and new here. And then I've got a new tiddler that is saved under this tiddler. So you can just build like structures of notes. So if you wanted to you know, save parts of articles or, or whatever it is. I think, uh, Tiddly Wiki is a great system and this skin, uh, in particular, Clevernote is super awesome. I included, uh, I curated a list of Tiddly Wiki reference so you can learn about how to use Tiddly Wiki if you really want to go deep into it. Um, a thing on their markup 
in case you want to uh, use different markup features to give it a different look. And then an example of how to make a list of tabs so that when you click open, for example, tab example, I can have the learning tab, which lists all the tiddlers from here, so on and so forth. But yeah, I think Clevernote is super cool. Um, there's an example. I'm not going to use that for this example of uh, this article. But I just wanted to briefly just go over sort of what I talked about, finding what's important, and then documenting. So uh, this is uh, takes about 20 minutes to read this article, I think. It's about 3,000 words. Um, but she, okay, she's talking about deep work. If we preview ahead, we get some quotes we might want to read. Um, so the quotes might be a good place to start. Then she talks about putting into practice, and I don't know which topic to focus on. And then an example. So we've got an idea of the, the whole article. We've looked ahead. Um, now if we start scanning this, uh, talking about the tech industry, well, we don't know what to focus on. Not really saying anything here. Uh, ah, we also know and have experienced the feeling of flow. When you're fully focused on a task, you lose all sense of time and everything seems to flow effortlessly. So I feel like the first thing she's really talking about in this article, this is like prefacing what she's about to talk about. Really, she's talking about getting into the state of flow right here. This is the first thing that's like meaty. So I might uh, throw that into Notepad. And uh, I've got Notepad over here. So I've got flow. And you should use your tiddler or whatever. But uh, maybe you want to include the quote. Maybe not. Um, and then she's talking about why is it so rare that uh, you, know, you rarely reach it. Okay, that's great to know, I guess. But, oh. Here's where, oh, this might be interesting. To create a state of flow, one must follow certain rules and embrace. So now again, we're into a meaty paragraph. So this one, we might want to take a few of these sentences. Um, I really like this part. The key to developing the ability for deep work is to move beyond good intentions and add routines and rituals designed to minimize the amount of your limited willpower necessary to transition from a distracted state into a state of stable concentration. For me, that is a very meaty thing that I need to remind myself of. So, anyhow, you can go through the whole article like this, just finding for you what, what's important, what jump, jumps out. You want to just... Any amount of trimming you do on this article, from 3,000 words to 500 words, 1,000 words, you're cutting the amount of time for your brain to review it um, by, by an order of magnitude. Um, so, yeah. Just wanted to go after that real quick. And then uh, lastly on the slides is uh, we've got the blank clever note. Um, that's on the Google Drive. Again, these are on the 7 directioncom slash curriculum. Um, this introsec con, this just happened like two or three weeks ago. A bunch of cool infosec Twitter people got together and did an introsec conference. Um, I would highly recommend if you, like, just pick what sounds interesting. I, again, I think that's a really good metric of like, what do I learn? There's so much. If you look through that list, look at what sounds interesting and start taking some notes. Uh, you know, outline what you learned. You could, uh, output it afterwards and maybe make a blog article or a blog post and like, here's what, and like organize it a little for someone like, oh, I watched this talk. Here's what I learned. One, two, three. Um, I think that's pretty cool. And lastly is a goals worksheet. Uh, this is from, I took a, or I was in a class um, by the previous mayor of Tempe. I live in Tempe, Arizona. Um, Neil Giuliano. And uh, he it does like consulting and business sort of uh, speaking and that sort of thing. And he had a really great system that I'd, I, I took kind of the parts that I feel were the most meaty about goals more than leadership. Um, and I think it's a, it's a really great document to work through. Um, just an example uh, is knowledge, access to information, personal development. I think this is a really powerful phrase. Things only get better when you pay attention to them. 
I think that for me really stuck out. And change is incremental over time and can be directed. And that's kind of what I'm saying with the ship, going one degree kind of thing. Anyway, I think this part is the one of the meatiest parts. Who or what do you want to become? How are you going to do that? And then figuring out just at least some the initial idea of what you think the steps are. Because if you don't have at least an initial idea, it's going to be really difficult. You're going to lose motivation because you... Because, uh, when you're when you're faced with a gigantic amount of information, which every part of IT is a gigantic amount of information, and security covers all of them. Security is in all of them. So there's there's a lot to do. So figuring out, should I get a book and then read along with the book and do exercises in the book or read articles or whatever is going to help you. And then talking about your, your strengths, how you can utilize those, and then your improvement areas. Dang it, it cut it ever so closely to the end of the page there. But anyway, I recommend checking that out, doing that every once in a while. I try and do it like every three to six months, sort of reorient what I'm trying to do with my life. This gives me a little anchor to pin things on. But uh, yeah, that's all I've got for today. I can go back to chat and view. But uh, I also, I haven't looked at the Discord, but... Um, I can bring someone on, I think, if someone has questions. Oh, Negihama's in here. Got Papa Waffles, picks them off, Rusty, and what she sees. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you can also feel free to just uh, ask a question in the chat. Uh, we made it. It's been a month. I don't know if, if everyone here has been on the whole journey, but regardless, I'm happy you're here. And, um, yeah, I'm excited for season two. Oh, yeah, that does remind me, since nobody's given me a question yet or said they want to chat. Um, season two, I also added in what season three will be about. But uh, let's go over that real quick. So on the curriculum page, you can sort of see what's coming up. So we covered all this. What are the career skills? Mostly problem solving, puzzle solving, uh, techniques about learning how to learn, techniques about building habits, and then here we are in this very moment and doing these slides right here. Next is actually what some infosec meet. Uh, that's season two. Who solves what how? And so um, started uh, with problem solving and critical thinking. Just a little bit more deep dive on that and how and we'll go over some of how Red Team uses it, some of how Blue Team uses it, and how you use it in the tech career. So just an overview and sort of a little dig a little bit deeper into that concept. Then we'll be doing fun Red Team stuff, or at least talking about some Red Team stuff. We'll do a little bit of Red Team stuff, just live breaking stuff. And you can see a, an, a hack in action. Um, and then uh, after that, Blue Team... Uh, methods, which I'm super excited about. Um, I was able to talk with my friends at Carbon Black, and uh, let's not let you see my passwords, but, um, oops, but I got access to a copy of Carbon Black Response which is a super cool tool for looking at uh, host activity. So if we plug in my host name, you're saying every process that ran on my machine in the past however long. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to show this off in the in the defense class because this is how this type of tool is how I do most of my work. Uh, you get so much cool information about what everything on your computer is doing. Oh, it came off of services.exe and a list of everything it did. So we'll talk about that. I'm super excited about that. Um, and then lastly, we'll have a chit chat like this. Uh, nobody's chit chatting, but that's okay. Uh, we can wrap up a little early. I can give you some of your life back. Um, and then go over some security news, because uh, as a security professional, you kind of got to keep a tab on what's going on, just because uh, 
there's these sort of back and forth of attackers making new tools, defenders finding new detections, attackers making new tools, and it kind of happens forever in a beautiful dance that creates a whole industry for us to get jobs in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't fault red teamers for, uh, you know, living in countries that uh, maybe don't have many avenues of opportunity. And so uh, they're able to make money by hacking corporations and individuals. I kind of get it. I get it. Um, but uh, yeah, looks like... Oh, and then, yeah, Season 3 we'll be going over some uh, hands-on skills, uh, doing open source intelligence with Google. There's all sorts of things you can find in Google. And Firo is going to find... There's some really great uh, websites in this book. Um, for finding out information about people. There's a lot on the internet. Uh, and then talking about automation and organization. And then we'll be getting a little bit into the technical stuff of what happens when you type a website in and press enter. Because there's a lot that goes on. And it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> so we'll start with that, and then we'll get more technical in the season after that. But, uh, yeah, looks like nobody's got any questions. No folks in the Discord. So I think y'all are free. You made it through a whole season of content and hopefully learned a bunch. Um, regardless, I'm so happy to have people to talk to. And, uh, yeah, as always, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I am an open book on life in general, but uh, especially for helping you reach any sort of goals you have for InfoSec. So if you want to chat about that stuff, feel free to get in touch. I believe that is a goodbye. But I hope you have a wonderful, super duper day. And I love all of you so very much. And goodbye forever. I mean, until next week. Okay, bye.